In this video, I want to have a look at trigonometry with complementary angles. So just a reminder that complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. So let's have a look at a right angled triangle. Say we've got this right angled triangle here. So our right angle's there. We're going to call this angle down the bottom here theta. Now let's label our sides as well. Let's call them A, B and C. Now from the trig that we've already learnt, we know that sine of theta, so sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so in this triangle that would be A over C. We also know that cos of theta would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so cos of theta would be B over C. Alright, so let's leave that there for a second, and let's have a look instead at this angle up here. Now this angle here, to figure out what that is, we know that the angle sum in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now if we already have this 90 degrees here, that leaves us with another 90 degrees to be split between these two angles. So if we're trying to figure out what this angle is, we can go 90 minus whatever this one here is. So this angle in here, we can call that 90 minus theta, so that's that angle there. Now if we do this same thing for this angle instead now, we're going to have sine of this angle, which is our 90 minus theta. Now that's going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite this angle is our B and our hypotenuse is still C. And then if we find cos of that angle, we're going to have cos of 90 minus theta is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to this angle is our A, so we'll have A over C. Now hopefully what you can see there is the relationships between those things that we just found. So our sine theta was A over C, and our cos of 90 minus theta was A over C as well. So that means that those two things are equal. So let's just write that up here. So we're going to have sine of theta is going to be equal to cos of 90 minus theta. Now it also works with this one, if we have cos of theta equals b over c, we also know that sine of theta, sorry, sine of 90 minus theta is b over c as well. So it works the other way, if we have cos of theta, that's equal to sine of 90 minus theta. Alright, so these are what are called complementary angles, and it's actually where the cos ratio gets its name. So cos, its full name is cosine, and that's because it's the complement of sine. So that's pretty cool. Alright, let's have a look at some examples. So we have three examples written here. So our first one asks us to find the value of alpha if sine 52 degrees is equal to cos alpha. So we've got sine 52, we want to write it in terms of cos. So we're going to use this first complementary angles relationship that we have up here. So we know that sine 50, sorry, sine of 52 is going to be equal to cos of 90 minus 52. So our alpha here, which is our alpha, is going to be equal to 90 minus whatever our angle is. So our alpha is going to be equal to 90 minus 52. So that means our alpha is going to be equal to 38 degrees. All right, our second example is similar, but we're using the other relationship. So we're starting with cos of 12 degrees and 34 minutes, and we want to instead write that in terms of sine. So if we've got cos of an angle, we can write it as sine of 90 minus that angle. So our alpha is again going to be 90 degrees minus our angle that we've already got, which is our 12 degrees and 34 minutes. So if we pop that in and figure it out, we'll end up with 77 degrees and 26 minutes. So if you put in cos 12 degrees 34 minutes into your calculator, you would get the same answer as if you did sine of 77 degrees and 26 minutes. All right, our last example is a little bit different, and there's actually two ways you can go about solving this. So our last example asks us to simplify cos 16 over to sine 74. So the two ways that we can do this, we could rewrite that cos 16 in terms of sine, or we could rewrite our sine 74 in terms of cos. So let's rewrite the cos in terms of sine first. So we're going to end up with cos 16 over 2 sine 74. That's going to be equal to sine of 90 minus 16 
over 2 sine 74. Now 90 minus 16 actually gives us 74, so that's going to simplify to sine 74 over 2 sine 74. And then if we divide the top and bottom both by sine 74, we'll just end up with a half. So this is the first method of doing this problem. But like I said, we could convert um, that sine into a cos instead. So our second method is going to give us the same answer. So we'll leave the top as cos 16 degrees, but we'll change the denominator to a 2 cos of 90 minus 74. And then that is going to equal cos 16 over 2 cos 16, because 90 minus 74 is our 16. And then if we divide top and bottom both by cos 16, we'll end up with a half. So there are a few examples of ways we can solve problems using complementary angles in trigonometry.